Oh hi, I'm the heretic. A presidential election is coming up in 2020, being two halves of the coercive monopoly that declares itself absolute ruler over everything within its arbitrarily determined geographic boundaries, which of the two lying sociopaths you, the people they deem unfit to rule themselves, shall decide to rule over them? CIA media shills will exclaim how Candidate A or Candidate B will lead only to horrible things happening, giving people the mistaken impression that they not only have a choice, but that their choice matters. In this exercise of impotence and display of angertainment to an increasingly skeptical audience, personalities emerge. You see, each party has a primary process, where they narrow down which of the sociopathic liars will receive the endorsement of the party for the presidential election. This is done through soliciting delegate support from certain states, showing that, once again, the Democratic Party only cares about democracy when it suits them. I guess people can't be trusted to pick their slave masters after all. Nevertheless, at the time of this recording, there are currently... To 203 people seeking the office? I'm not kidding. This comes from the Federal Election Commission, listing the people who filed with them who seek the party's nomination for President of the United States. But most of them won't have the support needed to even get onto the U.S. presidential debate stage. So if I'm going to make a series and not be here for the next 20 years, I'll have to focus on mainstream candidates. With this in mind, Let's begin with Andrew Yang. Yang's parents were born in Taiwan, which, trust me, will be important later. He is most well known for Venture for America, an entrepreneurship non for profit. He is now running for the Democrat nomination as a candidate for the executive high priest of statism in America. What I want to do is take these candidates and rank them on who is the most tyrannical according to their own stated policy positions. How it will work is that I will look through their statements, mostly relying on their websites, and make judgments based on their policy positions on how much more or less involved the state will be in their lives should such policies be implemented. They will be given a score from 2 to negative 2. Negative 2 means that if implemented, it will eliminate government involvement, at least in that particular aspect of society, completely. Negative one means there's a noticeable reduction in government involvement. Zero means that there is either no change or the reduction in government in some areas is offset by the increase in government involvement in another. One means there is a noticeable increase in government intervention. And two means the policy is absolutely totalitarian in terms of government intervention. The score will be averaged on the total number of issues examined to get a percentage. The higher the score, the more authoritarian the candidate. Again, a negative number means they want to make governments less involved, with negative 200% being a perfect anarchist, and 200% means they're literally Hitler. This is, of course, a gross oversimplification of the issues and is in no way scientific or even objective, nor are any of the issues I'll be looking at and their stated positions the candidates' actual positions. I don't have a crystal ball into their hearts and minds, but we only have their websites to go off of, and we have to use that. Nevertheless, this is just for fun, so don't take it too seriously. Anyways, enough discussion. Let's get right to it, because we have a lot of ground to cover. Everyone and their grandmother knows about universal basic income and what an absolute disaster it would be for both a national debt and the economy. It will just be another layer on top of the welfare state that will never be voted away and will make raising it an issue for candidates to run on in the future. The only solution this guy can conceive of is tax and spend. A libertarian enough goal but offset by its tones of social justice. Also, hilarious to see a politician preferring results to what feels good. A laundry list of tax and spend proposals that actually won't solve the opioid crisis, as outlined in one of my previous videos. 
How about we stop treating certain groups of people as deserving of special treatment as protected classes? <laughs> A wannabe politician said first principles. Seriously, though, lofty, worthwhile goals of cutting military intervention while libertarian are offset by shifting that spending over to spending projects. You... Dear gun owner, have too much liberty and aren't paying enough for our union cronies in the education and licensing that's required of you and will be endorsed by the NRA in the future, I'm sure. But nothing that will actually stop gun crime. Because it's the government's role to give businesses yet another reason not to hire women. Throw stolen money at pretty pictures. It's like the antivirus industry in the 90s. Create the problem by nationalizing student loans and creating a moral hazard for universities to increase tuition without risk of students defaulting on debt, and then sell the solution. There already is a pathway to citizenship. It's called going back home and coming in through the front door, asshole. No solutions presented here, just platitudes. More platitudes. You like worthless platitudes, do you? We'll have some more. Nope, not touching this one. It needs its own video. What? Ordinary people making their voices heard in our democracy? Never! Learn economics sometime. Also, this problem was solved ages ago. How generous he is with other people's money. Hey, want to directly increase the costs in production and create a worthless industry that produces nothing? I hate you. Gotta indoctrinate them when they're young, I guess. Finally! Even the Puerto Ricans don't want this. Is there a problem with goods and services being too affordable in this country? Hold the pharmaceutical companies reframed for our crimes accountable. This is communism, but with more flowery platitudes and vague, nice-sounding language. No, seriously, read the proposal. It's actually communism. The solutions being presented involve a rather unsettling amount of AI integration, in addition to government spending. Hey, you like the mainstream media? No? Well, the state's gonna give them more of your money anyways. Orwellian thought policing and censorship. Also, what the hell is an ombudsman? The federal government will be designing smartphones, and they'll be sure to make those the only ones you'll be allowed to buy. Cops won't be held any more accountable in the court of law, but in the court of public opinion, this is crucial. The federal government should stop telling private entities what to do. You know what? This is actually not a bad idea. I got a better one, though. Give me a nuclear missile silo. I don't want the nuke or the missile, I just want the silo. If Yang goes about this honestly, he'll find that his goal of 15 to 20% workforce reduction doesn't go far enough. A $1 billion slush fund for local newspapers? What about subsidies to beeper producers? Or to the horse and buggy industry, if we're going to be throwing stolen money at obsolete technology? Or maybe not have the banking industry as heavily regulated as nuclear energy? Forcing high school seniors to volunteer in organizations and outside communities, nothing would build greater resentment. You wouldn't know it from reading the title, but he wants to increase the presidential salary to $4 million. Also, he's running for president. Definitely no conflict of interest there, though. Also, this won't stop the revolving door. On the plus side, this plan isn't really that intrusive. Is, is this a subtle jab at Trump's mental health? Well played, sir. This comes from a good place, I'm sure, but not with other people's stolen money. Do you have any idea how many Americans are prosecuted under centuries-old laws? I don't, but I'm sure it's grisly. Can, can I make my wallet a 501c3? Anyone who's ever been on an airplane with an obnoxious passenger would tell you this is a horrible idea. How about no? Huh, you want free marriage counseling because married families are the best environment for children, which they are, but you want to incentivize single motherhood even further by giving them more free money. 
This is how we kill medical technology innovation. As an autistic lizard, off. Or you could just sell it to private developers and actually use the proceeds to pay down the debt. Oh, right. The debt and deficit are right-wing conspiracies. We already talked about this. Hi there. You like the post office, right? You like the DMV? You like waiting in lines, filling out forms, and waiting months to see a specialist? This is universal healthcare. Nothing more, nothing less. Instead of throwing more stolen money at the problem, eliminate doctor licensing! Jesus. So then you admit that most legislation is worthless because legislators need to be bribed into supporting it. That's called corruption. You know what else would make it easier to save for retirement? Abolishing taxation. Most of this information is already available for free today. This is just a waste of stolen money. Trust me, if this won't jack up the cost of colleges, nothing will. Maybe the Prussian model is not the best model for teaching people? He, he wants to build something called the Legion of Builders and Destroyers. That is so freaking metal. Except this is literally Plank 8 of Marx's Communist Manifesto, specifically the worker armies. Except I don't think Yang's smart enough to realize Marx didn't mean a literal army. Or you can stop restricting our economic activity so we can actually afford things. We shouldn't need welfare, dumbass. This would only hurt families who rely on hourly wages. Not your problem. Get your hand out of my wallet, pickle man. Increase the budget of the IRS by 50%. I need not say more. I think he needs his own government financial advisors to help him figure out why this is a problem. This should also stop professional victimhood, too. I'm still waiting on that answer for the subsidy to the horse and buggy industry. All this will do is get more American professionals replaced by cheaper Filipino replacements. You could just relax zoning laws, but instead you want to have legislation written in favor of renters that will drive up rents. With all the new criminals you'll be making, it will be hard for CTFC to not find financial lawbreakers. What's this? Relaxing regulations to encourage more plants to be built? Russia hacked the US election, you guys! Yeah, this is China's social credit system, only without all the penalties for being disobedient. What's truly weaselly is that Yang deleted the page that was more explicit about it and rebranded it completely. What a disgrace. His parents come from Taiwan, which formed as a result of Chinese nationalists who opposed Mao's Red Chinese Revolution. Now, Yang, the son of Taiwanese immigrants, is embracing Chinese communist totalitarianism, and he should be ashamed. What's this? It doesn't have the penalties associated with social credit? Well, that assumes that whoever implements it doesn't include it, or that a law won't be passed in the future, requiring all smartphones to have this app like they do in China. <laughs> Let's be honest here. You're not going to enforce laws that are already on the books. You'll be making new criminals out of innocent people operating under the incentives the government created. <laughs> the Ministry of Truth. In everything but name. If right and wrong is determined by how much fun something is, can we make murder fun too? Don't even get me started again. Restrict emerging technologies so the state can control access to it. Really, of all the things a politician can be concerned about, it's fitting that this is last on the list. And that's the end of that. Andrew Wang finishes with a score of 51 points out of 75. This puts his tyranny score at 68%. A solidly authoritarian, he has room for improvement, of course. I'm sure once the debates start, he'll adjust many of his positions to increase his authoritarian score even further. Oh, here's a question. Why do we know who Andrew Yang is? Yang Gang is a forced meme that's making its way through the interwebs. Nobody had heard of Yang before now. 
which makes me think someone is bankrolling him and promoting him hard. But I don't know who. My first guess is George Soros, who might think another young, charismatic minority will replicate the success of Obama while simultaneously being memed into the White House as Trump was. Even though Trump wasn't a forced meme. Either way, the Yang gang is almost certainly being played for fools here. The only reason I could see someone wanting to support Andrew Yang is either because they want free money or because he will hasten the collapse of the state. I don't endorse collapsitarianism or accelerationism, but it's a viable strategy, I will admit. Anyways, thank you ladies and gentlemen for tuning in and we'll compare this score to his colleagues in the future. Questions? Comments? Critique? Do you want me to do more videos like this? Would you rather me do literally anything else? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.